then. Welcome, welcome. Lovely to see you all on this um, beautiful Friday. So you might need um, you might need a pillow, you might need a, a blanket if you want to pop that underneath the back of your, your head. But just start by, um, it, it's, we're at an interesting um, point in time, aren't we, on this whole kind of corona journey, um, in that people are beginning to look forward with a little bit more maybe optimism, they're beginning to make tentative plans um, for summer holidays, for autumn holidays. I know I've booked some time away. And it's quite interesting because as we, as we begin to look forward, so we've reached that interesting point where we can begin to look back on the experiences that we've had. And I think there are lots of people, myself included, that whilst we're excited about certain aspects of, of what's to come, um, re, re, uh, re-seeing our friends, our families, um, being able to perhaps go into more more shops than just a supermarket. I think there are other other times where we're perhaps a little bit anxious about about what the future holds. Maybe we're not quite so looking forward to maybe going back to work or not seeing our family quite so much. I don't know. It's quite an interesting point, isn't it? Quite an interesting kind of point in the crisis that we can look forwards and look back. And I read this really interesting um, uh, little article the other day. It just kind of summed up, I thought, the, the mood of the moment. And it's just a, a short little passage. So it, it's okay to have conflicting emotions. You can feel discouraged and hopeful. You can want to spend time with someone and know that you still need some space. You can be excited about something and anxious at the same time. You can miss something and still love where you're at. You can hold space for the and. And I really liked that. You can hold space for the for the and. So maybe wherever, that's what Ian and Maureen in, wherever you might be on that, that kind of corona coaster, the looking forwards or, or kind of looking back, feeling anxious, feeling excited, kind of. Let's hope that throughout our yoga practice, we can hold on to that sense of balance and equanimity today. So let's start by bringing ourselves out, down onto our mat. Morning, Ian and Maureen, you just joined us. We can start just by easing ourselves down. If you've got your pillow or blanket, you can have it to hand. And let's start just by getting ourselves nice and comfortable by bringing your knees in towards your chest and just giving them a little hug there. So you can hold in front or behind the knees and almost let the, the lower back tops of the buttocks dictate what you, what you do here. You might just want to have a little rock side to side. You might want a bigger movement of circling your knees in one direction and then the other. So wherever you might be holding onto a little bit of tension or tightness around the lower back and around the tops of the buttocks, just have a little bit of movement there. Just see if you can begin to uh, release it. I know sometimes when we practice in the morning, maybe if we've not, not been up for too long, um, our backs might still be a little tight from maybe sleeping in a funny position. Oh, lovely. And when you've done whatever movement feels uh, kind of enough to release any tension from that lower, lower spine, just allow your feet to come down to the floor. We're gonna keep the knees bent to begin with, feet on the floor. And just for comfort's sake, I'm gonna walk my feet towards the outside of my mat. Allow my inner knees to knock together. And then just allow the arms, again, just listen intuitively to your shoulders and where you want your arms to be. So palms up towards the ceiling, the backs of the hands resting on the floor, opens up across the front of your chest and your shoulders. So that might feel quite a nice release. Those of you who might have been sitting in front of a computer for much of this week. If you are feeling a little bit discombobulated, maybe there's more anxiety than hopefulness about the coming weeks and months. Sometimes a reassuring hand placed on your belly or your chest. Just that sense of connection with oneself can just help bring that sense of grounding and reassurance. It's a full moon tomorrow as well, so that always adds to the discombobulation, just what we need at the moment. So just allowing the moment, closing the eyes, if that's comfortable for you today.
And in no particular order, just start uh, a scan through your body today, doing that kind of mental checklist from head to toe or toe to top, <laughs> whichever way you choose to go. And just noticing if there are any areas within your body today that are being a little bit more um, vocal than others, demanding of your attention. It might be a tight spot around the lower back. Maybe you've ventured out into the garden these last few days and you're feeling it a little bit, those gardening exertions. Maybe it's just that kind of general low level anxiety that has gathered around the shoulders and in the jaw, so you might be feeling a little tight there. So doing that quick scan, not spending too long on any particular area, but just noticing and letting that scan inform your practice, being particularly mindful of those parts of the body that might be just feeling it today at the end of another week. And then we'll just bring our awareness to our breath, a great barometer of how we're feeling physically and emotionally. And how does that feel today? Smooth and steady? Or maybe a little bit jagged and shallow? There's no right, there's no wrong, it's just as it is, but always useful to and weigh up what we're working with before we begin to move. So if your breath has some speed bumps, feeling a little bit of jaggedness around the edges, see if you can just begin to soothe and smooth the breath. It might not happen in the next five minutes or ten minutes. Only notice maybe at the end of the practice that the breath has just eased a little bit, feels a little bit more comfortable on its journey in and out of the body. Hopefully our yoga practice will work its magic. So a nice feel good Friday flow today, nothing too hectic to end the week with. Time to keep that awareness of our body, not worrying about moving too fast. Ending the week with a nice steady stretch. So when you're ready, just bringing one knee and then the other in towards your chest. And you can hold in front of your knees. You might need just to pick up your hips and just rearrange your pelvis as you do that. Or you can hold behind the knees if that's more comfortable, whatever works for you. We're going to focus on the feet. We're going to start with the feet today. So let's start just by flexing the feet. You're going to push the heels away from your knees or towards your chest. You're going to push the heels away from the toes towards your face. And then very gently change that as you point the toes. So we're going to move nice and slowly so we don't uh, induce any feelings of cramp in the feet. So we'll just continue pointing and flexing. And see if you can sync that movement up with your breath. Inhaling for one movement and exhaling for the other. It really doesn't matter whether you're inhaling to point and exhaling to flex or the other way around. Just seeing if you can move with your breath. Trying to spread the toes a little bit. Waking up through the feet, our foundations. And certainly I've been doing a lot of walking recently and I've really noticed that, that my feet get very tight. So it's really good just to spend a little bit of time releasing our feet. So let's do a couple more. Lovely. And then just let the feet relax for a moment. Just make sure that tension hasn't crept up into your shoulders and your face. So holding on to the knees, we'll begin again just by flexing the feet. So both feet flex this time, pushing the heels away from you. And you can stay there or bring your nose towards your knees. You're coming up into a little ball, nose towards knees, knees towards nose. Lovely. And if you wish, you can release the arms. So beginning to connect with our core. So the arms are reaching out alongside you with the palms up. So you're almost trying to reach your fingertips towards your heels. Let's see if we can hold for three. Keep breathing. Two. And one, lower the head, lower the shoulders, hands to the knees. Have a little roll across the back of the head, just release any tension from the neck. Have a little rock at the knees. It's massaging away tension from the lower back. 
and then we'll allow both feet to come down to the floor, hip width apart this time, and the arms just down alongside you, palms to the floor. So we're going to bring that awareness higher up into our legs now, still keeping that awareness of our feet. So right knee comes to your chest, and then from there, extend that leg all the way up towards the ceiling, flexing the foot. There might be a little bend in the knee. Point the toes, flex the foot, and then bring that foot all the way back down to the floor. So left knee comes in and up as you extend the leg, flexing the foot, so pushing the heel away from you. Point the toes, flex the foot, and then bring the foot all the way back down to the floor. So we're gonna see if we can sync that up with the breath. So extending the right leg all the way up as you inhale, flex the foot. Exhale as you point the toes. Inhale to flex. And exhale, bring that foot all the way back down. Lovely, left leg extended. Inhale as you flex the foot. Exhale to point. Inhale, you pull the toes to your face and exhale, bring the foot down. So again, we'll just work from side to side. If you lose track of your breath, just move a little slowly. Inhale, exhale to point, inhale to flex, exhale to lower, lovely. So see if you can minimize any rocking or rolling from side to side across your lower back. So you're really bringing the focus, the whole awareness of your attention to what's going on in the backs of the legs. We're gonna do one more with the right leg. Inhale to extend, exhale to point, inhale to flex, and exhale to lower. Last time on the left, and if you've lost track of the breath, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just breathe really smoothly and steadily. And then we'll bring the foot down to the floor. So we'll all end on the left foot, bringing it back down towards the floor. Beautiful, bring one knee and then the other in towards your chest. And this time we're gonna hold on around the backs of the legs and extend both legs up towards the ceiling this time. So there might be a really generous bend in the knees. You might be able to straighten the legs up towards the ceiling and flex the feet. So try and press your lower back into the floor. So engage through the core, really try and flatten your lower back down towards the floor. Now you can keep the hands behind the legs for a bit of extra support or bring the arms out level with the shoulders palms up towards the ceiling, lovely. So really try and imprint the back. Now take the legs out nice and wide, keep the feet flexed, so you're pushing your heels away from you, nice inner thigh stretch. Point the toes and then sweep the legs back together. Lovely, flex the feet, inhale as you take the legs out nice and wide. And pointing the toes, exhale, draw them together. Keep working through the core. We're gonna do that a couple more times. So really firing up through the center. Trying not to let the back arch. Let's do that once more. So taking the legs out nice and wide. Point the toes, sweeping the legs all the way up towards the ceiling, lovely. And then bending the knees in towards the chest, one hand on each knee. Take the legs round in a circle, just massage away any tension from the back. So we're gradually bringing that awareness of our bodies higher up from the legs into our core. And then we'll just bring the feet down to the floor, hip width apart, and shift our focus now to the upper body, our arms, our neck, our shoulders, and the upper and the middle back. So we'll start by reaching both arms up towards the ceiling. So your wrists are above your shoulders there, and really feel the sensation of dropping your shoulder blades heavily in towards the mat. Lovely, and then reach up really tall towards the ceiling. So as you reach the arms up, feel your shoulder blades peel off from the floor. And then as you relax, allow the shoulder blades to sink deeply back down into your mat. So inhale, we reach up a little rounding through the back, stretching the skin of the back. And exhale, drop the shoulders back down. Lovely, twice more. So inhale, we reach up, 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 trying to keep the wrists above the shoulders. So the arms aren't falling forwards or back. Once more, up, up, up. And this time as you relax the shoulder blades down into your mat, you're gonna bend the elbows and either clasping hold of opposite wrists, you might hold higher up your forearms or you might hold opposite elbows. So you're taking hold somewhere of that opposite arm. Beautiful. So we've got our forearms in line with our chest. 
just want to bring that left arm across the chest. You're bringing your right elbow down towards the floor, drawing that left arm across the chest, trying to take that left shoulder away from your ear, getting a nice stretch through the back of the shoulder. And then we'll bring the arms back to center, forearms in line with the chest, and then bring the left elbow down to the floor and draw the right arm across the chest. Lovely, inhale to center. Exhaling, right elbow coming down, left arm across chest. Coming all the way back up to center. And last time coming over to the left, lovely. Bring the arms back to center and have a look at which forearm is on top and then swap the arms over. So you've got your other arm on top this time. So we're gonna add on a little bit. Bring your ankles and your knees together. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, drop the right elbow down to the floor and see if you can tip your knees to the left. And you might turn to look towards that right elbow. So arms and legs going in opposite directions, inhaling to center. Exhaling, left elbow comes down towards the floor, right arm across the chest, tip the knees to the right. So we're getting a little bit of twist. You might look towards that left elbow. Inhale to center. We'll do one more each way. So we're getting a nice rotation through the spine as the arms drop one way, keeping the shoulder away from the ear, the knees drop in the opposite direction. Using the core to come back to center. So the next time that you bring that left elbow up from the floor, knees and arms to center, keep the knees where they are, and just start to circle the arms. Let the arms feel a little tight if you're holding onto your elbows, just bring the hands closer together to afford yourself some more space. So the arms come above the head, out to the side, and then you take your forearms down towards your thighs, tops of your thighs. So whichever direction you're going, do one more. Nice movement in the shoulders. And then you can, if you wish, change the clasp of your arms as you change the direction of your circle. It feels really weird now, hey? <laughs> so you're taking the arms around the opposite way. Remember, the closer your hands are together, the more space you're affording yourself. Let's do one more nice rotation, just getting into the shoulders, the upper back, across the chest. And then we'll slowly come back to center bringing the arms out level with the shoulders. So we've got our knees and our ankles together and allow your knees to open, the soles of the feet to press gently together. So chest open, hips open in a reclined butterfly. You might have a little gentle rock from side to side, tipping one knee and then the other down to the floor, or rock across the lower back. And as you settle into stillness there, if your hips feel tight, just slide your heels a little bit further away from your groin there, opening up some space in the back of the knee. And see if you can find that balance. You're not rolling onto the left buttock or the right buttock. You feel a nice sense of balance there. And we'll just take a couple of nice deep breaths there. It's a lovely open posture to invite the breath all the way down the front seam of the body, the hips, the chest nice and open. It's a lovely restorative pose, this. It's quite a vulnerable pose as well, isn't it? With all of our kind of soft underbelly exposed. So we're not going to stay there for very long. We keep the arms out exactly as they are. So really stretch the fingertips in opposite directions. And then we'll bring the left knee up towards the ceiling, sole of the foot to the floor, and then close that left knee onto your right knee. So we're in a little twist. Now you can stay there with the knees and the ankles stacked. You can separate them a little bit if that feels more comfortable. And if you want a deeper twist, scoop your knees up towards your chest. And then maybe bring your right hand down to that left knee or thigh and just encourage the knees to press down towards the earth a little bit more firmly. Gentle encouragement, never forcing. Maybe pick up your head and allow your chin to roll down towards your left shoulder. Breathing into that movement through the spine. So remember the higher your knees are towards you, you're going to feel that twist higher up the spine. One more breath. Lovely. If your hand is resting on your knee or your thigh, let's bring the arms back out through centre. Let's come back through that recline butterfly. So soles the feet together, knees open nice and wide, heels close to your buttocks or taking them a little bit further away from you to open up some space in the hips. Lovely. Coming back to that sense of equilibrium and balance before we try the other side. So this time we bring the sole of the right foot to the floor, knee points to the ceiling, and then we close right knee to left knee. 
So you might stack knees and ankles. You can slide that top knee up, up just off, separating them a little bit. You can scoop your knees up and you can even bring that left hand down to your right knee or thigh and gently encourage the knees down towards the floor. Oh, and you might find, as I'm finding, that one side feels a little bit tighter today. So never feeling that you've got to do exactly the same uh, manifestation of that posture on both sides. Sometimes we need to um, acknowledge that our right and our left sides are quite different. Let's take one more breath there in that nice twist. Lovely. And then we'll come all the way back through center. And this time we'll bring the feet and the knees hip width apart. Lovely, reach both arms up towards the ceiling, wrists in line with your shoulders. And then bending the elbows, you're gonna spring your elbows down towards the mat. So the elbows are tucked in towards your, your um, outer ribs and your fingertips are pointing up towards the ceiling. You're like a little robot. So elbows tucked in nice and tightly. You're going to press your upper arms, your elbows into the floor and see if you can arch your back. So you're puffing your chest up as you press your elbows down into the mat. And then you relax that pressure and allow your upper back to return to the mat. So as you inhale, you drive the elbows down, you puff up your chest, you get that nice stretch out through the back. And then exhale as you release. Just going to do that once more. So elbows drive down, chest pops up, inhaling upper back. Gets that nice stretch and then release. We're going to add on to this. So feet hip width apart, pressing into all four corners of the feet. As you inhale, press down with your elbows. And this time we're going to lift the hips up into a bridge, bringing your chest towards your chin. And then as you exhale, relaxing that pressure underneath your elbows as you slowly ripple the spine down. So we'll do that twice more. So as you inhale, we press the elbows down for a little bit more uplift through the hips, a little bit more opening through the chest. And then exhale as you slowly, slowly relax the arms and relax the hips to the floor. Just once more, inhale, coming all the way up. The spine feels comfortable for you this morning, pressing into the base of the big toes, you drive the elbows down. And then slowly, slowly we'll release all the way down. Give those knees one last squeeze. You can move, you can rock, you can circle, do whatever you need to do. And then by whatever means feels comfortable for you today, we're gonna to come up and round to all fours. So you can roll to one side or you can hook your ankles, hold behind your knees and maybe have a little rock up and down the spine, space permitting. And then we'll find our way round onto all fours, getting that blanket and cushion under your knees if you wish if they're a little bit tender today. And we'll just spread the hands out nice and wide, hands under the shoulders, knees underneath your hips, and finding that lovely uh, tabletop position to begin with, so a nice long spine there. Crown of the head pointing forwards, tailbone pointing back, a little bit of firming up through the belly, lovely. And before we come into our cat-cow, we're just gonna do a little bit for our wrists. So your right hand, you're gonna turn your fingertips out to the long edge of the mat, and if you can, do another 90 degree turn and turn your fingertips to point towards your right knee. So either out to the side or towards your right knee. And then just start a little circling movement there. You're trying to keep the palm on the floor. Now I did this yesterday. I try and do a little bit of work on my wrists every day. So I do so much yoga and I can really feel this. I think just from, I don't know, I think of my computer, maybe doing lots of yoga. So a little circle. So I'm just going to go really easy on this right side, which is very, very tight. Really good to release the tension through my wrist. Lovely. And then slowly, slowly come back to center. Just pick up that right hand, give it a little bit of a shake, a little twirl before you plant it down onto the shoulder, and then we'll shift our focus to our left hand. So either just turning your left hand out to the side so the fingertips point the long edge of the mat, or turning another 90 degrees so your fingertips face your left knee. So the top of the wrist is pointing towards the top of the mat, the underside of the wrist there. And then we do that little circle. And I, I can really feel the difference. It's quite profound. You might feel I'm the same, I'm right-handed. So I know that that right side maybe um, picks up more of the burden in terms of, you know, kind of reaching for things, lifting things. And I'm writing, which I do a lot of, it's that right hand. 
that gets to use. So you might notice, like me, that uh, one side needs a little bit more TLC. Really good to do these kind of wrist stretches regularly. Lovely. And slowly, slowly, we'll release that left hand. Just pick up the hand, give it a little shake, a little twirl, and then plant it down onto the shoulder. Lovely. Here we go. So hands enlivened. Let's dip the belly. Keep pressing into those hands so as you bring the chest forwards. Take a nice inhale, arching the back. Exhale as you round up angry cats. You're pressing into the hands. Inhale, keep pressing into the hands as you bring the chest forward so we're not disappearing into our shoulders. And exhale to round. And if the chest and the shoulders feel tight, just take the hands, a hair's width wider. Do a couple more of those. Lovely one just to bring our awareness now into the back seam and the front seam of the body. Lovely. And then on your next inhale, let's breathe ourselves back into that tabletop position, nice long spine. And as you exhale, plan your feet if you've got your toes tucked and slide your hips back towards your heels, coming into a child pose. And um, before you kind of sink into that pose, maybe just have a little rock at the hips side to side, nestling them back towards your heels, walk your arms forwards. You can keep your palms flat, relax your forearms, relax your elbows. Or if you've got a little bit more energy this Friday morning, come up onto your tented fingertips. So you're pressing your fingertips down with a little bit more energy as you hug your hips back towards your heels there. Doesn't matter if your forehead doesn't touch the floor there, just get that nice sense of space and length through the sides of the body. Maybe a couple of breaths into your back. Feel that lovely broadening of the back seam of the body. Widening of the ribs. Lovely. And then if like me, you're on those tented fingertips, we'll plant the palms down. We'll keep the hands where, where they are. So they might be a little bit further forwards of the shoulders. And then come back onto all fours, tucking the toes under. And then push the hips up towards the ceiling, coming into a downward facing dog there. And this first downward dog, we're being afraid to add a bit of movement, a little wiggle of the hips, a little pad through the feet, shake of the head. Lovely, and then coming back to stillness, we're going to drop that down onto all fours, dipping the belly, bringing the chest forwards back into that little cow pose, and then flattening the feet, we'll slide the hips back towards the heels, coming into our child pose, keeping the arms where they are, the palms flat to the floor this time. Let's build up with the breath. So inhale, come onto all fours, and as you exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips downward facing dog. Inhale as you drop that down onto all fours, lowering the knees, lifting the chest, dipping the belly. Exhale, flattening the feet, slide the hips back towards the heels. Lovely. A couple more times. So really lovely, slow, methodical movements, allowing us a bit of time to connect with our breath on this Friday. Connect with our bodies. Maybe we've felt very disengaged from both during these busy days. Let's do one more like that. Inhale, heart pulling forwards, coming onto all fours. Exhale, tuck the toes, slow extension of the hips up and back as you straighten the legs. Lovely. Inhaling, last time back down onto all fours. We'll dip in the belly, lift at the heart. Exhale, we'll all pause and meet in that child pose. Lovely. Foreheads up and down towards the earth. Beautiful. So we're going to come up into our downward dog. We're going to hold in downward dog now. So if downward dog really isn't for you, you can just continue to do a cat cow or continue to do that little flow that we did before. If you're okay to hold in that downward dog, we're going to lift the hips up and back. A little bend in the knees. So you can push your hips up and back. And then bring your feet together, your, your ankles and your knees together. Lovely. You're going to pick up your right foot and tuck your right foot behind your left foot. So you're on the ball of both feet. Lovely, and then bend that underneath knee. So you're bending your left knee and try and press your right heel back towards the mat. So you're straightening off through that right leg. Underneath knee is bent, lovely. And then we'll bring the feet together and then we'll change sides. So left foot, we tuck it in and behind the right foot. So this time we bend the underneath knee, the right knee, and stretch that left heel back so you should feel a nice stretch out through the back of the leg. Lovely. We'll come back to centre, taking the feet hip width apart. So we're going to look forwards between the hands and shift the weight forwards to plank. You might need to do a little plank dance, taking the hands forwards a little bit. So the body comes into that long 
lovely line, a little doming through the upper back as you press into your hands, lovely, take an inhale. And as you exhale, shift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, pull the body forwards, look forwards, step back. Exhale, push the hips all the way up and back, downward facing dog, lovely. Just once more, inhale, pulling the body forwards, step back. You know, pause there in that plank, so you can always bring the knees down straight away. Or if you're holding in that full plank, imagine you're pushing your heels into the wall behind you, crown of the head and tips of the ears forwards, lovely. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, we'll all drop down into our knees, and then from there, lower down onto our bellies. Beautiful. And just pick up one leg, stretch it back, and then the other. So we're going to do a nice shoulder stretch here. Well, I say nice. You might, that's debatable, but it's a lovely stretch for your shoulders. So go easy if there are any shoulder issues. We're going to take, so the hands are just alongside the shoulders. You're going to reach your right arm out, level with the shoulder. So left hand underneath your shoulder, right arm is stretched out long. Lovely. You're going to roll onto your right side. So you're rolling onto your right side. So you should feel a stretch across that right shoulder. Now you can keep the legs stacked one on top of the other, or you bring that left foot and just bring the foot to the floor just behind your right leg. I'm doing it now if you're confused. So my right arm is out to the side, level with the shoulder. I've rolled my weight onto my right side and I've just brought my left foot just tucked in on the outside of that right leg, knee pointing up towards the ceiling. It's a deep, deep stretch. Lovely. So you can just hold for one more breath so that right palm is flat to the floor. And then very slowly, if you've got that left knee bent, we'll bring the legs together and roll ourselves back onto our bellies. Lovely. Bring both hands off the mat now, elbows point up towards the ceiling. And as you inhale, take a gentle cobra, just take the sting out of the shoulders, lovely. And as you exhale, slowly lower the chest down. If you need to take the arms wider, take them wider. Nice and broad across the collarbones, once more, inhale. And then we're gonna do that little shoulder stretch on the other side, I know you love it, <laughs> all the way down. So this time we'll bring the right hand alongside the right shoulder, so elbow points up towards the ceiling and stretch the left arm out. So directly level with your shoulder, palm to the floor. We're gonna roll onto our left side, so you're on your left temple. You can keep your legs together, you can always pop something underneath the side of the head. So you should feel a little stretch, or maybe a great deal of stretch on that um, left shoulder. Or you can bring your right foot and just tuck it behind your left leg. So my on the ball of that right foot and the knee is pointing up towards the ceiling. And obviously the further you roll over towards the left, the more intense that stretch will be. And again, you might find that there's one shoulder that feels it more than the other. Ooh, let's see if we can just hold for a couple more breaths. It's a quite an intense shoulder stretch, that one. Lovely. And then if you've got that right foot to the floor, we'll slowly bring both legs together so we can roll ourselves down onto our bellies, take both hands wide apart, off the mat, elbows point to the ceiling, press into the tops of the feet, inhale, peel the chest up, so just release the shoulders, so as you exhale, let's come all the way down onto our bellies. Lovely, once more, inhale, ripple up, that lovely open-hearted cobra, exhale, come all the way down, hands underneath the shoulders, we'll push onto all fours, and then walk your hands back towards your knees. So you're just sitting up on your heels for a moment in hero pose. So we're gonna come down into a very gentle child pose to release the shoulders. So as you fold the body forwards, this time we slide your fingertips back beyond your toes, turning your head to one side, allowing those shoulders to roll forwards and inwards after that intense stretch. So palms up towards the ceiling. Head is turned to one side if that's comfortable. And just feel that lovely inward rotation of the shoulders. Take a breath or two there and then just turn your head to the opposite side. Just to balance things out. Lovely. And then we'll bring our forehead towards the floor. 
And as you inhale, you're going to sweep the arms forwards and up as you come to sit up on your heels. You can do this from seated if you wish. And as you exhale, take the right arm back, left arm forward. See if you can keep the weight even across your sit bones. Inhale as you reach both arms up, turn the chest to centre. Exhale, take that twist the opposite way. Lovely. Inhale, reach the arms up. And as you exhale, back into that child pose, palms up towards the ceiling, forehead coming down towards the floor. And again, inhale, so the fingertips trail forwards and up as you lift yourself up, sitting in hero. Exhale, one arm forwards, the other arm back. It really doesn't matter which way you turn. But see if you can keep the weight even on your heels. Inhale through centre, lift up nice and tall. Exhaling all the way back down. Lovely, into that twist the other side. Inhale all the way back up. Exhale, back into that child pose, palms up towards the ceiling, forehead to floor. Now you can stay with that version or we're going to add on. So this time as you inhale, sweep the arms forwards and up and lift your hips. So we're in standing kneeling. As you exhale, right arm forwards, left arm back, try and keep the hips pointing forwards and the shoulders on top of your hips. Inhale through centre. Exhale, take that twist the opposite way. Lovely. Hips pointing forwards. Inhale through centre. And as you exhale back into that child pose, control that descent down using those core muscles. Just once more. Inhale, push the hips forwards and up. Arms reach up, 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 really tall. Exhale, uh, left arm forwards, right arm back. It doesn't matter if you're going the opposite way because as you inhale, we'll come through centre. And as you exhale, we're going to come back the opposite way into that twist, doing both sides, lovely. Inhale through centre and exhale last time, back into that child pose. Reach the arms back alongside the legs. Palms up towards the ceiling, forehead reaching towards the floor. Lengthen your fingertips towards the end of your mat, the back of your mat there. Lovely. So we're going to keep the hands where they are. As you lift your chest once more, come and sit up on your heels and just flip your palms to the floor. So you're sitting back on your heels. Lovely. If this is too much, just to extend the legs out straight in front of you. So push into your hands, lift and open through the chest, maybe looking up towards the ceiling. We've got the option to stay there, just squeezing the shoulder blades together. If you want a little bit more, try and lift your bottom from your heels, making that lovely plank shape through the front of the body. Hips pushing forwards. If that's too much, keep the bottom down. Lovely. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, slowly, slowly lower the bottom back down to the heels. You're going to push up, come all the way back up into that standing kneeling. And then take your right foot out to the right, turning the toes out towards the top of your mat. So you're almost in a warrior two position with that foot. It's lovely. Right forearm, rest down on the thigh. So just ease your way down. And then this left arm, we're gonna circle forwards and up as you inhale. You can look up if you wish, and then exhale, reach the arm all the way back and down. So twice more. If it's too much to work with a straight arm, you can always bend the elbow and just bring the fingertips to the shoulder. One more big rotation. Lovely. So this time as you inhale, we're gonna sweep that left arm all the way forwards and up, and let's come into a warrior two position. So we've got both arms out level with the shoulders, reaching the fingertips in opposite direction, lovely. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, we're gonna reverse our warrior. So that left hand is sliding down towards the floor there. Make sure that that right knee isn't rolling in, lovely. Inhale back to center. Exhaling into that side angle, right forearm to thigh. This time we'll take that left arm all the way up and overhead. You can maybe tuck your chin in towards your armpit and keep gently pressing that right knee open so you're getting a little inner thigh stretch, lovely. Look down towards your right knee and then bring that left hand to your lower back, back of the hand snuggles to your lower back there. Roll that left shoulder back, keep the gaze down and get that nice length and stretch into the side of the neck. Beautiful. Let's come all the way back up into our warrior two, reaching the arms out. Keep the arms where they are as you straighten out through that right leg now, turning the toes forwards towards the long edge of the mat. 
and try and encourage the little toe edge of your foot to the floor so we're not collapsing in the knee. Push into the outer edge, lovely. Inhale as you stretch out through the arms, push the hips forwards. And as you exhale, right arm down, left arm all the way up and over again, deepening that side stretch. Inhale through centre. And as you exhale, nudge the hips to the right and we'll change arms. So we're just reaching the left fingertips to the floor there, using our oblique muscles. Inhale, hips to centre. Exhale once more over to the right, keeping the hips pushed forwards. And this time we'll inhale through centre. And if you wish, exhale as you nudge the hips to the right. We'll bring that left hand all the way down to the floor. If it doesn't quite get there, you can just stay in that version we did before. So if you found the floor, just bring your, your weight forward so your shoulders above your wrist. Lovely option to lift that top leg, flexing the foot, keep the hips pressed forwards. We'll bring the foot down. A little bit of momentum now to bring yourself all the way back up to centre. And then bring the hands to the hips. Slide that right knee in. And then we'll take the left foot out to the side. So you've got the toes facing away from you. So we were doing a warrior two. Squeezing that knee open. And then we'll bring the forearm to thigh. And just let that right arm relax alongside you. So ready for those nice shoulder rolls. So inhale, sweep that right arm forwards and up. And exhale all the way back and down. So you might follow the movement of your arm with your gaze. Ooh, that's nice. That feels good this morning. One more nice full rotation. Beautiful. So this time we'll sweep the arm forwards and up as you inhale. And as you exhale, can we release both arms now? So it's almost as if we were in a, a ground warrior two lovely lovely grounding warrior two so we'll turn that front palm up take an inhale and as you exhale left arm all the way up and over so we're sliding the right hand down the outer thigh there and that front knee has a temptation to roll in so keep pressing it out to the side lovely inhale through center exhale forearm to thigh this time we'll take that top arm all the way up and over maybe tucking your chin in towards your armpit Lovely, looking up towards the ceiling. And then we'll just change the gaze. So we look down towards that left knee and tuck your right hand into your lower back now. So we're rolling that right shoulder open. So we're getting a nice stretch out to the side of the neck there. Lovely. Let's come all the way back up into our little warrior two, our grounding warrior two. And then turning the left foot forwards, we'll extend the leg. And again, try and press the little toe edge of your foot in towards the floor. So it probably won't touch the floor. Mine certainly isn't flat, but see if you can get that sense of just working your inner thigh there, lovely. So we'll take a nice inhale. And this time as you exhale, left arm down and right arm up and over. Just make sure your bottom hasn't sunk back. Inhale through center. Exhale, nudge the hips to the left. And the right arm just reaches down. So it's not reaching the floor, it's just lengthening down towards your, your knee. If you've got long arms, you might reach the floor. Inhale. Exhale, my Tyrannosaurus Rex arms aren't going to get there. But this time, inhale to center. And as you exhale and shift your hips to the left, you might bring that right hand down. You might have to shift the weight forward slightly. So you've got your shoulder above your wrist. Lovely. Top arm can extend alongside the ear. Palm down, ear towards upper arm. Option to lift that top leg, flexing the foot. It's hard on the hip there. So feel free to keep the foot down. Lovely. And then we'll all lower the foot. A little bit of momentum to push our way all the way back up through centre. And then bringing the hands down in front of you. Going to bring both knees underneath the hips. Actually, no, bring the knees together. Sorry, bring the knees together. You're going to tuck the toes under. Walk your hands back towards your knees. And then from there, we're going to pick up the knees and come into a little squat position. So you're squatting on the balls of your feet. If this is too much for your feet, come into a forward fold. We'll join you in a minute. If you can, you're tucking your chin to your chest. You're getting that nice stretch out through the feet. And then slowly, slowly, we'll start to push the hips up towards the ceiling, coming into a lovely forward fold. Nice, generous bend in the knees. Maybe a clasp of opposite elbow and a little sway from side to side, if that feels nice this morning or just let the arms dangle in front of you. 
Lovely, but really just let the knees bend as generously as feels comfortable. Beautiful. And then from there, if you're holding your elbows, letting go of your elbows, keeping the chin tucked in, slowly, slowly, we're gonna to start to roll ourselves up. Take your time, we've been on the floor for a while, so rolling up. And when you come up to stand, have a little roll with the shoulders, forwards and up, and then back and down. Do that maybe a couple of times in one direction. Oh, and then maybe the other. Beautiful. And then finding that lovely mountain posture. So feet hip width apart, just turning the palms slightly forwards. So you get, again, that sense of space across the chest. Fingertips lengthening down, crown of the head lengthening up. This, again, that heavy velvet cloak has settled across your shoulders, taking them away from the ears. So a little bit of flow. So let's bend the knees and sweep the arms all the way up as you inhale. And as you exhale, arms can come in front or out to the side as you come down into that forward fold, whatever works well. Pause in that forward fold and then walk your hands up to your shins and then take your hands above your knees. So your fingertips are pointing, uh, pointing the floor, even if you can normally keep your hands on the floor in a flat back, just for the purpose of today. Hands against your thighs, press your hands into your legs so you can really elongate through the upper body. Lovely. Option to keep the hands where they are or reach the arms back alongside you so your palms are down, you're lengthening your fingertips back to the wall behind you. Lovely. Soften your knees, sweep your arms all the way up towards the ceiling, rising up to stand. And then bend into the knees, take the hips back, coming into a chair pose. Straighten the legs, inhale as you rise up, exhale down into that forward fold, here we go. Hands sliding up the shins and then to your thighs, fingertips point down, press into your thighs, take the chest forward, shoulders sliding down the back. Option to stay there or use the core as you reach the arms back, little aeroplane wings, lovely. Bend the knees, inhale, sweep the arms all the way up towards the ceiling, rise up to stand. Exhale, sit down into that chair pose. Knees stay on top of your ankles. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, straight back down. Last time, all the way down. Open up those backs of the legs. Lovely. Hands finding your thighs. Loop the shoulders away from the ears. Crown of the head forwards. Lovely. Reach the arms back. Airplane arms. Firm up through the belly. Bend the knees. Inhale, rise up just down. Sweep the arms up. And last time, coming into that chair pose. Beautiful. Rise up to stand, inhale. And as you exhale, sweep the arms all the way down alongside you. So we did a little bit for our hips, opening up through our hips when we were doing our little warrior two on the floor. So we're going to do a little balance challenge now, working into our hips. If you need to use a piece of furniture to help you lean up against, feel free, lots of options. It's one of my favourite yoga poses, but it is a bit of a challenge. So we're going to start with our right leg and our right hand. So you're going to turn your right palm forwards and take that right arm back. So you're really opening up through the shoulder. So you've got the little finger edge of your hand as closest to you. Shift the weight into your left foot and see if you can bring the right heel to the bottom and take hold of your foot. So you've got your right thumb alongside your right big toe, draw the knees together. If that's a little bit too much and you've got long trousers, you can always catch hold of your trousers. If you need to rest your left hand against a piece of furniture, feel free. If you want to work on your balance, stay there. Or reach that left arm all the way up towards the ceiling and connect your first finger and your thumb. So press your first finger and your thumb together. Lovely. You can stay there working through balance, reaching up or take that left arm level with the shoulder. Begin to press the top of your foot into your hand so heel comes away from bottom and you might begin to elongate the chest forwards. We're not dropping the chest, coming into dancer's pose. When you reach your peak, see if you can hold there just for a moment and then slowly rise back up and release the foot and bring the hand down. It's a challenge, that one. So remember, you can always just hold on to a piece of furniture and just get 
an improvement in your balance. You can hook your trousers or you can try that full pose. Let's have a try on the other side. One side might feel very different. So this time you turn your left palm forwards and just take the arm back a little ways behind you. So fix your gaze on something that's not going to move. As you bring that left heel in towards the bottom, you take hold of the inside of your foot. So your thumb is against your big toe. Draw the knees together and you might just want to stay there, resting your right hand against a piece of furniture or a wall and just improve your balance. Or reach that right arm up towards the ceiling. Connect your thumb and your first finger, pressing firmly together. It's a mudra that's supposed to help with our balance and concentration. You can stay there or slowly we reach that right arm in front of you, level with the shoulder and begin to press the top of the foot into your hand. So you lift the heel away from your bottom and reach the arm forward. So we're not dipping the chest, it is a back bend and a hip opener, lovely. When you reach your peak, see if you can pause. Beautiful, then slowly, slowly come back to center. Well done guys, it's a challenge that one. Come all the way back, have a little wibble out through the feet. That's a really hard one, that one. It's a beautiful pose, but it's a very hard posture. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. And as you exhale, come down into a forward fold, bend your knees as generously as you need to. Coming into that halfway lift, you can keep your fingertips on the floor, your shins or your thighs. And as you exhale, plant the hands and bending one knee, and then the other will come back down onto all fours. Point the big toes together, widen your knees, and ease your hips back down towards your heels. I'm gonna take my elbows out wide, resting one hand on top of the other, and then rest my forehead on the back of my hand there. Upper back is nice and open. Space for my heart and my chest to melt down. So there's a tiny, tiny back bend there. Hips getting a nice release. And then coming back to our breath. Lovely. And then when you're ready, propping yourself up on your hands, pointing both knees forwards. You can drop your hips to one side and stretch both legs out in front of you. Give them a little bit of a shake. And then popping a generous bend in your knees, you can slide the flesh of your sit bones out to the side there so you're sitting up nice and tall. Let's gather the arms up as you inhale. And as you exhale into that forward fold, you can keep your knees really generously bent, just draping your belly over the legs. Or you can begin to press the backs of the knees towards the floor, opening up and straightening out through the legs a little bit, depending on how the lower back and the hamstrings feel today. So again, just really tuning in, remembering when you did that body scan, which parts of the body were being a little bit more vocal this morning than others. Allow the body just to yield forwards. And slowly, slowly we'll walk the hands back, coming up, shoulders above your hips. Going to bend the knees so your feet are where your knees were and just bring the hands behind you, fingertips pointing forwards or slightly out to the side. So press into your hands, lift up through the chest, lovely final heart opener there. You might carve a line up towards the ceiling with your nose. You've got the option to press into your feet and lift your hips, coming into a tabletop. If that's too much, keep the bottom on the floor so your bottom is in line with the backs of your knees. Pressing into the hands, keep the gaze up towards the ceiling. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, we'll all tuck the chin in, lower the hips. Beautiful, extend the legs. Reach the arms forwards, tuck the chin in towards your chest and slowly roll yourself down onto your mat. You're not getting enough space there, ease your way down. And then reach the arms back behind you and extend the legs into a lovely full body stretch. 
I can hear my cat screeching downstairs. That's generally the point where he's going to come and be disruptive. So in that full body extension, you can point your toes, you can reach the arms back, you can stretch into one side and then the other. There you are. <laughs> and then slowly, hello, oh, I knew that was you, bring the arms down by the sides of the body and bring your heels in line with your sitting bones. Lovely. So bring your knees in towards your chest one at a time, one hand on each knee. Straighten the arms, take the knees away from you and maybe feel a little arching through the lower back. And then bending the elbows, squeeze the knees in and down towards your chest and feel a little rounding through the back. So as you inhale, you straighten the arms, push the knees away from you, a little arching through the lower back. And as you exhale, squeeze the knees in towards your chest. And you might even want to bring your nose towards your knees, coming into a little ball. A couple more times. Inhale, head and shoulders come down as you straighten the arms, push the knees away from you. Exhale, squeeze the knees in and down. Maybe lift those towards knees. Just once more. Inhale. And exhale. So we'll keep the knees to the chest, lower the head, lower the shoulders, reaching both arms out level with the shoulders. Just making sure your knees haven't dropped away from you. So really scoop them up and in, take an inhale. And as you exhale, twisting to the right, let the knees settle. You can always pop a blanket or a jump underneath the knees. Turning your head to look over that left shoulder. Just be really steady with the breath now and just let go of any sense of striving or forcing. You can always slide your knees further away from you if you want less of a stretch. Lovely. And then head coming to centre, use an in-breath to bring those heavy levers of the legs back to your chest. And then as you exhale, we'll just tip them over to the left. Maybe rolling the head away from the knees. A couple of breaths there, just that final twist. And then inhale, bringing the legs back to center. As you exhale and release the feet to the floor, you can widen the feet and allow your inner knees to touch, just as we did at the beginning or stretch both legs out in front of you and slowly lower the arms so the little finger edge of your hand is just by your outer thighs there, space underneath your armpits. Let's take a moment to arrange the body in a comfortable position now. Again, palms up towards the ceiling, open the chest, open the shoulders, Hand on the chest, hand on the lower belly for a little bit more reassurance or grounding if that full moon and general anxiety of the current situation is just playing on your mind this morning. And just as we did at the beginning, do that quick top to toe or toe to top, no particular order. Checking through the body. After about an hour, an hour a bit of movement, just seeing how the body feels. We found a bit of space. Have we released any tension this morning, maybe? And then checking back in with your breath. Does the breath feel any different? the end of a practice and at the beginning of a practice, maybe a little bit more comfortable, a little deeper, a little slower. Maybe you're simply just more aware of your breath, which in itself is no bad thing. Maybe something we should do more regularly. Let's take a moment just to check in with ourselves in the midst of all the busyness. Finally, just check in with the state of your mind this morning. 
you will be a head full of those conflicting emotions. Maybe, hopefully, there's a little bit more clarity, a little bit more calmness again at the end of the practice um, when we first arrived at our mat this morning. Let's just take a couple of moments where we allow the body, the mind and the breath moments to work in synchronicity, to work their magic on each other, the breath, calming the busyness of the mind, as the mind begins to settle and clear, so we can begin to release any pockets of tension or anxieties that might be manifesting in the body. So as you begin to deepen the breath, just reminding ourselves as words at the beginning of the practice, it's okay to have conflicting emotions. You can feel discouraged and hopeful. You can want to spend time with someone and know that you need some space. You can be excited about something and anxious at the same time. You can miss something and love where you're at. You can hold space for the and. As you begin to bring a little bit of movement into your fingers and toes this morning, just holding on to that no matter where you are along that journey. The hopeful or discouraged, the looking forward to getting back to some kind of normality or maybe a little bit anxious at the same time. It's all good. You might want to reach the arms back, extend the legs into that full body stretch this morning. Oh, that feels nice. And then we'll bring the knees back in towards the chest one last time. And again, let the body guide you as to whether you want to move or not move. And then rolling yourself onto one side. Come and join me and me, Luca, <laughs> in a comfortable seated position this morning. Oh, that's a morning. You've been outside, sitting up nice and tall, so finding a balance across your sit bones. Let's drop the chin ever so gently down towards the chest, opening up some space in the back of the neck. Bring the hands together at the heart. And just thanking one another for continuing to share our practices together. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm having some conflicting emotions about going back to teaching face to face. I must admit, I, um, I quite like, much as I'm longing to see you all, I'm quite liking my little Zoom land as well. <laughs> I know some of you are as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully we'll be able to marry both 